We are going to make a mapping diagram using this relation. Now, a relation is a set of points or ordered pairs. You have your first numbers in the ordered pair, which has to do what's called the domain, the x values. You have your second number in the ordered pair, which has to do with your range, also known as the y values. Now, domain can also be called input. Range can also be called output. So it really all depends on what math teacher you have. But this is how I make a mapping diagram. You make two bubbles. Or in my case, they're terrible blobs because I don't know how to draw. But you make two bubbles. You take the numbers in the domain and you list them in order. Now, it looks like already that this is listed in order. So life is good. Negative 7, negative 3, negative 2, 4, and six. Okay, now what I didn't do is I didn't label this first bubble. I'm going to label it domain. You're going to have other teachers that might label this input, but I'm going to stick with domain because that's more algebra one, whereas input is more like eighth grade math. It all depends. Okay, now in the second bubble, I'm going to write these out in order too. Now you notice they're not in order. One, zero, negative one, seven, and four are not in order. So my smallest number here is negative one, then zero, then regular one, then four, then seven. Now, if at any point, if these numbers repeat, like if I had like a negative seven in the domain and a negative seven somewhere floating around in the domain, you're not going to write it out twice, okay? Now, this second bubble, range, all right? Some teachers will put output, whatever. Negative seven. Now, what we're going to do is we need to map these. In, or, in other words, what's happening with negative seven? Well, negative seven is going to one, so I'm going to take negative seven and put an arrow to regular one. Negative three maps to zero, so I'm going to put negative three to zero, like so. Negative 2 maps to negative 1, so I'm going to put negative 2 mapping to negative 1, like so. 4 maps to 7, like that. 6 maps to 4, like that. And we have ourselves a mapping diagram. Again, depending on the teacher, but depending on the book, I made bubbles. Some teachers use uh, rectangles. I called it domain and range. Some teachers use input output. But either way, you're taking the x values, you're pointing to the y values, and you're making sure everything is in order. Okay, that's a mapping diagram. Hope this helps.